So, hello, SCOM friends. What's up? My name is Ran. And I'm 22 years old and I'm from Israel, Tel Aviv. On this session of monitoring every system with no MP or API, I'm going to show you how can we monitor using SCOM every system that has an email notifications feature. Let's begin. So, which problem the SMTP monitoring concept solves? We've all encountered with a few systems that can't be monitored by SCOM. Those systems doesn't have a dedicated management pack or an API, maybe because it's a legacy system, or it's a hardware unit, door access system, UPS or AC unit, or something else. And we want to monitor those systems because they are important and critical. So how can we still monitor those systems using SCOM? In a lot of cases, those systems can send email notifications that includes information about the system status and its tasks. We can use those notification emails which sent by the systems, analyze those emails, and generate alerts in SCOM in case that something wrong within the system. The SCOM add-on mailing management pack with, which made by Ruben Zimmerman does this job exactly by analyzing those emails and generating an alert in SCOM if the email meets the text patterns that we've configured. So I made a lab environment that contains three servers, especially for this session. All of them has Windows Server 2018 OS. Um, the first server is the domain controller. The second one is the Vim backup, backup server. And the last one is the SCOM server, which contains the SQL engine and an SMTP service that we will see its part in the process in the next slides. The Vim backup and replication is a third party data protection solution and we will use it only as a proof of concept for SMTP monitoring using SCOM. So let's see the high level process. On the first step, the Vim server is trying to backup the DC and perform a backup job. On the next step, the backup job fails with an error, a thing that triggers the Vim server to send notification email via SMTP protocol to the SMTP server which located in our SCOM server. The SCOM add-ons mailing management pack that I've mentioned in the previous slide analyzes this email and generates an alert in SCOM. As you can see, a critical alert has generated with all the important details. So let's dive in and configure the SMTP monitoring utilizing SCOM. We will start with the SCOM server configuration and the first thing here to do is the installing the SMTP server feature and its prerequisites using the server manager. The SMTP service will be the component that received the email notifications from the monitored systems. After the installation, we will set the SMTP service configuration. First, we will open the IS6 manager. Then, we will start the SMTP service if it's not already initialized. And then we will click, uh, right-click the SMTP service and open the properties. And now we need to select the IP address of the server that contains the SMTP service, which in our case is the SCOM server, the server itself. On the next step, we will click on the access tab and we will open the relay restrictions in order to grant permissions to relay emails to our SMTP server. On the computer section, we will add the servers on IP addresses and add the internal mail server IP that holds the transport hub role to let him also relay emails to this uh, server. All right, so the SCOM on mailing. The SCOM on mailing management pack requires us to set registry keys before the MP import. So we will create a registry file, which ends with .erg, .reg, uh, excuse me, that includes the registry keys path. Afterwards will be the XML config file path, which specifies the location of the XML file that holds the information about the text patterns. We'll cover it in the next slides, so don't worry. The AML directory key that contains the default path uh, that stores the incoming emails 
and the MP use it in order to pull the incoming emails. Next thing is the EML archive key that contains the path uh, which stores the email archive of the analyzed emails. The number of lines from top key specifies how many lines of the email body will be analyzed by SCOM. And if we want to verify this registry configuration, we can also open the registry editor. After all those steps, we will need to create a folder named temp on our C drive. Next step is the import of the management pack, an easy step. And now we will talk about the XML that's responsible for matching text patterns for the MP. So first, we will create the XML file uh, on the ctempf that we've created uh, with this specific name, SCOM add-ons mail-in monitor item list. As you can see in the monitor um, or on the screen. So the XML file holds the monitor lists that contains uh, the mail monitor items, which are the actual alerting patterns. So each monitor item includes a unique title and description that will be shown in the alert details in SCOM. Next thing is the mail from field, which has a big responsibility for the pattern. So make sure the mail from is matched for both configuration, the XML and the SMTP configuration of the monitored system. The mail subject fields field is also an essential field and each word that will be written here will be analyzed in the subject mail for matching patterns. The mail body field acts the same as the uh, mail subject and will look the, for matching text patterns. In our case it's not necessary and the alert will match only with the, the subject and it's fine, it's okay, it will work. The mail, the mail source server is basically the sender server name. And for the SCOM alert receipt type, we have two types. The first one is the manual that holds the that keeps the monitor object in error state until SCOM admin resets it. And the second one is timer that will force the monitor to reset after the SCOM alert reset time in seconds value that you can see in the second line. All right, so we are on the last step of the configuration, and now we will configure the Vim SMTP configuration server. Um, first thing, we will turn on the notifications option. Um, now we will see the SMTP will set the SMTP server field to point the server that holds the SMTP service, which in our case is the SCOM server. In the from field, we need to write the email address that match our XML monitor item configuration, which is vim at scomaton.lab uh, that we saw in the previous slide. About the to field, we have to divide it to two sections. The first one is the prefix, where it says, um, I think alert, yeah, where it says alert. Um, it doesn't matter to us what will be written there. It really doesn't matter to us. What, what is extremely important is the suffix. The suffix of this value must be the FQDN of the F SMTP server. So make sure you set this part correctly to avoid problems. The last field is the mail subject, which is also very important too. Um, in the field, we will set uh, matching text patterns for your monitor, monitor items. For example, I have set here the job result variable, and in my monitor item rule, I've used the job result types as text patterns in order to generate an alert. So there are more variables uh, like job name and job object count that we can use for generating alerts so it's very customizable all right so it's demo time and I've already configured the settings from the previous slides in the lab environment and now we're going to generate alerts in real time 
So welcome to my lab environment. Uh, this is the Vim backup server. This system is a very popular backup system that actually has a management pack. Um, but for our intentions, it doesn't matter because we use it only for the proof of concept of SMTP monitoring. You can see here some backup jobs uh, for the domain controller, the SCOM server and the SQL engine. The SCOM backup job is the one that we are going to test today. And as you can see, the last result is failed. It's because I gave him wrong credentials in purpose um, in order to see him fails. So now we are going to start the backup job. And what we, what we actually expect to see is the backup job fails and sending an email notification to our SCOM that will generate an alert in real time. Meanwhile, when the backup job is running, I want to show you the mail in MP views. So this is the mail in MP views. Let's start with the manual mail in alert view. The alert for the failed backup should appear here in a few minutes. Um, next thing is the manual mail items view which contains the manual monitor items that configured in the XML file. And we can see here all the, all the fields that we've configured in the XML files, like the unique title, the email from, uh, subject, etc. We also have the SMTP service view. We can see here uh, its healthy state. Right now it's healthy state. Um, which means that the service is running, the SMTP service is running. Um, its details contains the registry keys that, we, that we've configured in the beginning of the process. The last view that I want to cover is the generic mail alerts view. So if an incoming email does not match the pattern configured in the XML file, a warning alert will, will be created in this view. So that's it. Now we'll check the backup job. Yeah, it was failed. Um, and now we're waiting to see the alert in SCOM. Refresh the page. All right, there we go. Here is our alert. Um, mail item, VimScom backup job has failed as we expected. It was generated right now, less than a minute. And down in the alert details, we can see a lot of information about the failed job. Um, you can see the mail from, the mail subject. And in the mail body, you have some extra information about the job like, um, like the duration or the compression value. And that's it. So mission accomplished. And now we were officially proven the that the SMTP monitoring concept is alive. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you've learned something from this quick session. So thanks again, guys, and goodbye. See ya.